Well, we're glad you're with us today, and we're going to finish a series up on how we win in life, and I know it might not be a popular topic, but you have to keep fighting, and that's not why you came here today, but anyway, so that's what we're going to look at, so let's pray. Father, we, Lord, we're grateful that in the midst of this chaotic world that we live in and the busyness and the uncertainty and family issues and not getting along with relatives and work and all these things, Lord, if we look to you, even though that might not be solved, if we let you fight those battles for us, we always win. Lord, remind our hearts that today and our spirit In Jesus' name, amen. Do you remember remember years ago, there was a book written, a very popular book called uh, The Four-Hour Workweek. You're acting kind of stunned about that. No, that's not a joke. It was called The Four-Hour Workweek. And there was a lot said, this or that or whatever, and... I'm thinking, this is kind of where we've gotten at here in, in our society. In other words, everybody tries to pack in as much as they can, work as fast as they can, so we can have all this, whatever we want to call it, this kind of free, free time, if we will. And if we're not careful, we miss a character that God is trying to build in our life. Uh, sometimes you get sick of my sports illustrations, but I'm going to give you another one today. Uh, so there's a very famous, I'm not going to give it away, a very, very famous uh, trainer for athletes, but maybe mainly basketball players in the NBA. And he trained quite a few. And when he would first talk with them and they'd set up like, everything on the routine and all, all that. And they, for the first day, he'd say to each and every one of them, all through the years that he had coached some of the highest levels of that profession in basketball, he'd say, okay, meet me here tomorrow at four. No big deal. Okay, okay. And this, you know, always would happen, da, 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 da. But he said... The only one that got it right was Kobe Bryant. And he said this. What he always meant by that, to test their character, to see if they had the work ethic, what he meant by that, I'll meet you at 4 a.m. And Kobe Bryant was the only one that ever showed up at 4 a.m. Out of all the athletes. The championships, the things that people do and, and so on and so forth in that lead, whether it's, it's a professional golfer or, or a guy can hit a baseball that's going 105 miles an hour. How does that happen? Well, they just don't show up on game day. They have to put some work in. Now, that's the same. We, we've got to get to the place in the same way of our Christian faith. So many of us are failing because we're not willing to put the work in, if I can say it in that way. And if you're willing to do that, there's not a, a difficulty that comes with it. There's actually a joy that comes with it. What does the Apostle Paul tell us when he's getting ready to die? All that he'd gone through. Second Timothy chapter 4 and verse 7. I have fought the good fight. Notice what he's saying there. It's past tense. I have, I have fought the good fight. I've finished the race. I have kept the faith. So when it comes to fighting, and you got to, you just have to do it. The devil is after you every second of every day. I I just want you to be aware of that. And the better things go for you, the more he's coming at your family, at your relationships, 
at things that you worry about, whatever it may be, if we're willing to say, I, I'm going to get in this and I'm going to fight and let the Lord do what he can do in my battles, life takes on a different meaning. And that being said, how do we do that? The Bible also gives us something very important. It's the sword of the Lord. And I'm having a hard time concentrating with my granddaughter back there, uh, crying. I don't know what she's doing, Alexis. Can you help me out here? <laughs> she. Man. I can't, I'm losing it. I can't do it. I can't get her to come to me, but she'll yell in the service. Okay. I didn't know what I was saying. All right, let's see. Sword of the Spirit. <laughs> now, the sword of the Spirit, all right, is the Word of God. When the warriors of Israel would go into battle, and it was a fierce battle, they would stand there. I'm left-handed, and wherever I would, they would put a sword, whether it's a right hand or left hand, and a sword that they could, not a large sword, but one that they could swing easily in battle. And if the battle was fierce enough and it knew that it could cost your life, they would have the warrior next to them actually wrap their hand with the sword in it with leather around it. And after leather was wrapped around it, they'd rip cloths up and wrap it around again. It was an extension of their arm in battle. The, the sword of the Lord is God's word. And it activates by what's inside all of us, the Holy Spirit. If we, if we are willing to, to take time to open this book up every day, it is amazing how your day changes. I didn't say your week, I didn't say your month, I didn't say your year. I said today. You know, it's just like eating. We say if you've been to City Church, you know, I always say how much food you can eat in five minutes. You can eat a lot of food in five minutes. That being said, once you eat it, there's a digestion place that takes place the rest of the day. What God is telling us when we, when we read his word and we activate it with the Holy Spirit, that's the sword that we have. And it's so unique and it's such a miracle for every one of you. We're all going to go through something different tonight. Everybody's going to go through something different. And the miracle is so amazing that whatever you read late at night or early in the morning for your devotion and took five minutes and all of a sudden you're meditating on it through the day, that's exactly what you needed. But you have to do it. We have to be willing to know that we're going to have to fight. If you want to win, you have to keep fighting. You have to do it. And the way that we do it, God has not complicated it. The Holy Spirit dwells within us as a believer. And it's activated when we pick this book up and we read it. And it does what no other book can do. It gives us exactly what we need. It's powerful to the place that the devil has to flee every time that you're in front of him. Now, that doesn't mean he won't come back. But when we have God's word dwelling within us, that's our sword. It's an extension of our life. And if we're willing to know and do what God says, it is amazing. Well, why, why am I... What I get more and more frustrated, you know, is... As time goes by in our society, because it really is getting like a free for all. I mean, look at, I mean, how can I say this? Uh, how much evil is that after our, our children and our grandchildren? I don't want to get dinged on YouTube, so I'm careful what I'm saying. You know, I, I debated on whether to say this, and it kind of fits, so I just, I don't know, I prayed about it, so I'm just going to say it anyway, so. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You know, about 
eight years ago, right before the church started, uh, I was at a Mexican restaurant getting food to go. And, and I was standing up, up in uh, the, the little hallway and then back towards all the tables. It was, it was packed. There was a guy there with his wife. It might have been his stepson. I, I, I think it was, actually. The kid was like five years old. So uh, I, I don't know what happened, but uh, the stepfather cussed at the kid, you know, in a re- very derogatory way. And you could see the kid's shoulder just kind of like, you know, they just went down. So the guy goes back, uses the restroom. So I'm getting a little hot. And I'm standing there. He comes back. And, and the five-year-old had a bag with the uh, chips and salsa in it. Well, it's, it kind of was spilling out. And that guy smacked that kid as hard as he could in the back of the head. That was it. And I, I yelled, what are you doing? And everybody in the whole, uh, uh, you know, what's going on? And he looks at me, he's half, he was half drunk. And so we went back and forth for a while, and I said a few choice things, which I won't say. <laughs> anyway, so we, it was going to go down right then, right then there. Why? Because he was hurting this innocent child. And so finally he left between his tail between his legs, and his wife was yelling, and, uh, and, they, and they took off. So about three feet over, there's a checkout lady, and she's, you know, her eyes about to say, I said, uh, uh, is uh, my food ready to go yet? <laughs> and she goes, she goes, I, 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 I was ready to call the police. I was going to call the I said, I wish you would have. Now, why do I say that? Why do I bring that out? What are we doing in our society that we are seeing these children all over our country attacked every day in a perverted way with anything that you can imagine. And what are we doing? What we have to be realize is that we're in a battle right now. You are in a battle. I'm in a battle for your kids and for your grandkids and for your home and for the next generation. Amen. And it's that complicated. You don't have to yell and scream at people. All we have to do is know that the battle is the Lord's. And he's going to handle it. How many of you, let me ask you another question. And we're going to go back to another portion of Scripture in the Old Testament. And uh, Joshua chapter 1. And Joshua chapter 1. And we're going to look at, we're going to build on exactly what we were talking about. The Holy Spirit, through the Word of God, is going to do something for you and for me. And He's going to do it every time. Every time you pick up, every time you pick up this book, there's a, something's going to happen in your life. You might not see it yet, but you're going to have greater wisdom on what to tell your son or daughter. You're going to, you're going to have more how to work this out in your relationships or your marriage, whatever it might be. Uh, well... What does it say? In Joshua chapter 1, I want to read verses 8 and 9 first. If, or this book shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do it according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and you will have good success. Have I not commanded you, be strong? And be of good courage. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. You know what the hardest thing to accept today is? Somebody says something about you. And the closer that they are to you, the longer that you've known them, the more it hurts. But if you're in God's word... There's a great passage in the book of Psalms that will help you. In the beginning of Psalms, 
God tells you, you don't have to fight. You know, they're talking about you, they're saying this, you're not getting along, all these things. You can't believe all that I hear now, or in our pastors here, that's happening in family situations. And how do we escalate it is coming back the same way that they do. It says, you know what? I, I'm, I'm going to let the Lord do this. And yeah, everybody thinks I'm, I'm the bad guy right now. And I, you go to, in the beginning of Psalms, it says, the Lord is my vindicator. So let him handle it. Don't let the devil steal your joy. Your way will be prosperous. It'll be successful. We take the word of God, which is so powerful, it will cut through anything that you go through in this life. It might take more time than, than what we are accustomed to. God always wins. And I'm just here today to remind you that God is your vindicator. He's going to come through for you. And those things that happen in those relationships and those family situations that have been ripped apart for years, as long as you and I have gone to the Lord and said, Lord, I, I don't get this, I've already forgiven them, and they're bringing all this stuff up again and again and again, as long as you're good with it, enjoy your life. It's too short. It's too short. We have to keep fighting. Some of you right now, or many of you, hundreds that are watching and listening, are ready to give up. Do you know how many articles and stories that I've read of young ladies, beautiful, in college, scholastically, all A's, on the soccer team, excelling? How many, how many stories that I can give you that they've killed themselves in the last two years? Why? Because they feel they're not, there's so much pressure on what they have to live up to. I want you to know today, when Jesus Christ is in your life, you don't have to live up to anything. He's just called you to be faithful. If we're faithful, the sword of the Lord, it's God's word. And if you read it, it's a catalyst that takes place. So you're going to win. You're going to win with the sword of the Lord. And one last thing I, I, I want to share with you to build on that. That you have to have. We need each other. You're not going to win this alone. Lone Ranger, do what, even as a believer. You need some reinforcements. You need some people around you that when you can't fight, they can fight for you. That's why I get so frustrated when so many people that, where are they? That were here before COVID and they're not here. I'm not going to get down on them, but they're very vulnerable. We, we need this. You know, we, we need to go out and give each other, hi, hey, how you doing? I've been praying for what's, it's, what's going on here. And I've heard, that, are, are, you okay? are you okay? What can I do? We, we've got to have that. The reason in the Old Testament that we saw the promised land and Joshua and Caleb went in, this is 40 years later after they first went in. That Joshua's told you can go into the land that I promised you. Forty years before that, they went in also, but they went in with ten other spies. They went in with twelve spies. Joshua and Caleb went in together. The other ten went in together. And as they went in and did all this, what did they say? What did they say? Hey, there's gi giants. There's giants in this land. Yeah, we, we face the same thing. How many people do you have around you? Oh, uh, it's never going to work. Uh, and nobody else has done that before. Oh, you're in bad shape. It's not going to happen. Not going to happen. Never seen it happen. I, I have a saying, if you've known me long enough, no doesn't always mean no. No doesn't always mean no with the Lord. 
Joshua and Caleb were walking back with the other 10 40 years before this. The other 10 are saying, man, we're going to have to tell Moses we can't do this. It's impossible. But Joshua had Caleb, and Caleb had Joshua. And they said, who are these giants when it comes to the true and the living God? You have the power of the Lord Jesus Christ living within you, the power of the resurrection. The demons shake and flee just by the name of Jesus. And we have those times that we know we're, we've got, we're, we're there, we got it, we know we can do it, but there's also times that, man, I, I, I just can't take another step. You got to have believers around you. Do you know that for every negative person in your life, it takes five positive people to overcome the negative one? Do you ever listen to people in Hollywood about they, they have a lot of podcasts, YouTube, they have all these different things, and you ever listen to them talk about the comment section? Oh, I turn the comment section off. I, 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 I can't read, you know, I can read a hundred good things in the comment section, but there's that one in there, that, that one comment about my hair or whatever, you know, whatever, and I, I, I can't handle it. Well, I don't know why that is. It's just we, we, we just have those hurts. I, I don't know. But you've got to have people around you that are believers that are going to uphold you that can also get you through this battle, whether it's your husband or your wife or someone that you love that's close to you or your brother or your sister. I don't know who it is, but you've got to have a bunch of them today. Because I honestly believe, is what we're reading there, your life is actually going to be blessed today and tomorrow. No matter how bad this world gets, God gives us a promise right there. Where are they going? They're going into a land that's full of people that don't believe in God, that are doing everything imaginable, every wicked thing that you could think of. That's where they're going into, even though God has promised them that land. That's where we're living today. God's saying, I'm going to give this to you. God wants you to have joy and peace. Quit worrying. We all do it. But when it happens, go, you know what, Lord? Your word says it. You're never going to leave me or forsake me. So, hey, when I'm sleeping, you've got me covered. I got to stop worrying about this. I got to know that wherever my kids are, wherever their grandkids are, that your angels are watching over them. I got to remind myself of that, Lord. It is an amazing thing to be called a believer. Realize what we have as a believer. We get this book that comes alive. You ever have somebody read it that's not a Christian? Oh, I don't know. I don't get it down. I can't understand that. I've heard it I don't know how many times. Then they ask Christ in their life. I'm like, wow. Look what, I, that's just what I needed. This book is written to you. It's written to me. And you've got to keep fighting. And you can win. You just have to be willing to believe what God says in his word that you are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. Not on your own, but through him. And that you're never going to lose. You might think that you're going to lose. But if you stay faithful, you will look back and we're going to close with what the apostle Paul said again. I have fought a good fight. How many guys I know in the ministry, I was just praying in the back with Pastor Ernie and Pastor Brent. Served 20, 30 years in ministry. All of them is unfaithful. I know I have a target on my back. I know that. And I know I've got to do everything that I can to stay in God's word. But guess what? Same as you. I don't have to be paranoid about it. I just got to know, hey, 
If I'm equipped, I got the armor of light on. All the, all the armor that God tells us to put on, the truth, the breastplate of truth, the, the helmet of salvation, all those things, it's actually called something different in the book of Romans. It's called the armor of light, everything that's on. In other words, when you are doing what God wants you to do, you can see into the unseen world. And God gives you discernment and wisdom on what to do. Let's close with this. Same verse, 2 Timothy chapter 4 again, verse 7. We're all going to be here someday. This is the end of his life. And we don't know when our life's going to end. And God's brought you and I here today to think about eternity and to know that our life is a vapor. I hear all these guys, it bothers me on YouTube, and they're talking about, oh, man, I want the Lord to come back. Man, I just, I can't. Really well-known preachers, I just want the Lord to come back this way. I think he could come back this month. He, he could actually come back this year. I, do I want the Lord to come back? Absolutely, but not right now. Why? Because as I shared with you two months ago, whether it was Christianity Today or Christian Post, a thousand or a hundred thousand people come to accept Jesus Christ as their Savior every day in the world. We got to give people more opportunity. You've got them in your own family. So do I. We've got to love these people and let them know that there is hope for what they're going through. And you have it and I have it. But this life is over so fast. We'll close with this. I've fought the good fight. I've finished the race. I've kept the faith. Got a phone call uh, Friday from a family I'd known for 40 years, known well. They said, hey, Dal, I want to let you know that dad has and they're all believers, that he's, and I keep it very generic because I don't want to say the name because I didn't get permission, so I won't do that. He's got cancer, and they gave him a year to live. I said, oh, man, he just called me back the other day. I said, Al, things have changed. I said, what's going on? And they said, Dad has a week. And uh, they love Jesus. They're all good. It was rough. I went down yesterday to see the family. And, uh, man, I drove away from there. And I just thought, what would I do if I knew that I had one week? I don't know. I don't know what I do. But I know this. It's a fight. It's a battle. Life. But when I went into that house and I prayed with that family, there was a presence of peace that passes all understanding because they know what we know. And that is our life as a vapor. And before we know it, we're out of here. So I challenge you, I encourage you in every way imaginable, don't quit. Don't quit, keep fighting. Keep fighting for what is good and what is right while we can. I don't know. Is everything so exploded in this last year? I don't know where we're headed. I know God hasn't changed. I know the power that lies within you and within me hasn't changed either. And what we just read, God's word, which is a sword, says, if we have faith, everywhere you step will be prosperous. And you know what I think that means in many ways? 
you have joy and peace every day. And you say, nothing major, nothing, whatever. Just have joy and peace every day. It sure hit me hard yesterday. But I know this. I know what we have is true and real and we will be in eternity in heaven with all our loved ones, our brothers and sisters in Christ, our Lord Jesus, forever and ever and ever. Please don't quit. No, God is getting ready to come through. He always does, and if you can't make it, let another believer carry you on their back. It wasn't for about 10 people in my life, I probably wouldn't be here today. What the things that, whatever that I went through. But all of a sudden there'd be a phone call or there'd be somebody give me money, and da, 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 the whole thing. And it was amazing to see how God watched over me. And that's why I can speak with conviction to know that God is real and that you're going to make it because he is your heavenly father and he'll never leave you or forsake you. Let's pray. So our heads are bowed today, you know. I know we have uh, so many people now watching on YouTube and that's why we always want to give an opportunity, and you are so faithful to pray at this time, and I ask you to do that if there's somebody there watching. God tells us in his word, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I, I don't know who you are, what you've done, anything in life. I know this. Jesus died on the cross for all of our sins. Man, we, we, we have so much to be thankful for. And all you have to do is by faith. You don't have to figure it out. But you say, Dallas, I don't know what it is, but something's <clears throat> knocking on the door of my heart. And that's the Holy Spirit saying, hey, through Jesus, let me come in and reside in your life and give you eternal life. All you have to do is pray this prayer with me. Jesus, I believe you're God's son. And you came into this world to die on a cross for me. You shed your blood for all of my sins, your perfect blood. Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart and from to just forgive me for all of my sins and from this day forward, help me to live by your resurrection power. Father, we thank you, the power of your word, your spirit that goes forth. The world that we live in today and everyone here that's going through something, that we have hope. And we know without a doubt that you're going to fight for us. Jesus, if there's someone here today, as Ben leads us in this closing song, may a friend bring a, a family member or a friend and, and come down. I can show them just the same prayer I prayed with those listening today, watching. I can pray right here, right now, in this place. In Jesus' name.